I did a video a while back testing Coraseal, uh, which is a product, it's a rust converter I've never used before. Um, and I received a lot of feedback on that video about uh, how I wasn't giving it a fair chance, how I should have done prep differently, et cetera, et cetera. All good feedback. Um, and just one of the things I was testing in that video was how it would work spraying it to areas I couldn't reach, which is maybe not the, the most usual or the most common way people would use this product. Um, so I decided to give it a fair chance. Um, I've got my rusty cowl that I have since replaced, um, but I'm gonna find a nice, really scaly bit and, you know, probably something up here, cut a few test pieces out of it and wire brush it, apply some Coraseal, uh, which is the product I tested before, and some Eastwood Rust Converter, which is a product that I've used in the past. Um, so this video is gonna cover the application of it. Later, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take these test samples, um, and I might do a couple where I, I top coat it with a rust, can, or a rust encapsulator from Eastwood just to test that as well. Um, but I'm going to expose them to the elements and I might even spray them down with some salt water and see how it does long term. Okay, I'm looking for a good piece to test this on. Um, obviously, if your metal is so far gone that it's, you know, flaking apart, you're not going to try to save it with the rust converter. Um, so I'm picking probably this area here where it's nice and scaly, but still metal and still something that you might want to treat and save with a rust converter. Okay, I talked about this when I tested it before, but here is the Eastwood rust converter. It's kind of a gray color, maybe a little green, but it's thinner than the core seal. This might be hard to tell, but um, it's not nearly as viscous, uh, so it actually sprays better in a spray bottle. If we come over here to the core seal, it almost looks like a milkshake, um, but it's got a pink tinge to it and is a little bit thicker. Um, you know, it looks appealing. It might actually, uh, with texture and everything, it really could be confused for a milkshake. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply the Eastwood on these two, the core seal on these two. Um, I tried to get two worse sections and two better sections. What I'll do is take the two better, this uh, numbers, or sorry, letters B and D, and once it's all set up, I will probably put Eastwood Rust Converter on top of it just to uh, see how it goes. Okay, I'm gonna let those uh, sit and do their thing until they're all set up. Um, just kind of of note, just because it's much thinner, the Eastwood, uh, I was only able to apply kind of a lighter coat. The Cora Seal, you can see it's still just standing on there, um, which is similar to what I saw in the last time I tested this. So that might be, you know, positive or negative, depending on what you're trying to do. Um, what I've experienced in the past is the Eastwood, because it's thinner, it can actually creep into areas. Like if you have a seam together and you want to uh, protect inside, it'll actually creep inside. So we're going to let these sit up, see how they behave, and uh, check back with them later. Okay, it has been some time, as you saw. Um, the two Eastwood rust converters, I'm honestly a little surprised. I mean, this is why we're testing, but it looks like I put a fair amount on there and it looks like it either didn't fully react or it didn't, uh, I don't know, maybe it's protected and it just looks like there's still some red rusty bits underneath there. Uh, the Cora seal, obviously I was able to put on thicker um, and I'm not seeing the same, maybe a little bit there, we'll see. Um, what I am going to do now is take one of each of those and coat it with this rust encapsulator, which is designed to go directly over rust and metal. Um, I've contacted Eastwood about a few different things, and this should cover 
their rust converter just fine. Uh, we're going to see how it works on the Cora seal as well. Um, I don't see why it wouldn't, but again, this is why we test. Okay, here are the samples, and like any good experiment, uh, I went ahead and cut a piece of just bare steel, and I wire wheeled the heck out of it, got all of the rust off, and you can see it's pitted and, you know, what you'd expect under rust. Um, and I went ahead and cleaned it with lacquer thinner just to make sure I didn't have any oils or anything on there. So that's going to be my control. Um, I expect this to rust pretty quickly and it should be fun. Okay, it's been just overnight, a little less than 12 hours. Um, and as expected, you don't see much change on the treated, treated plates, but um, it might be hard to see with the glare of the sunrise, but you've got some initial surface rust forming on this. Um, yeah, from here on out, I'm going to probably come out every morning. I might accelerate things a little bit with a salt spray um, and record as I go, and that'll be the next part to this video to see how it does uh, some some period of time later. <laughs> um, so stay tuned. We're gonna we're gonna see how these rust converters hold up, and this Eastwood rust encapsulator holds up over time.